Hello everyone, welcome back. Um, today we are going to be discussing a case that has gotten a bit viral this last two weeks with some updates and some new clues. And um, we're going to just discuss a little bit about it because it is what everybody's talking about and it's some good news and hopefully it will bring justice. Um, this is about the boy in the box cold case that came that happened in Philadelphia. This is where a child's body was found in a box. He was naked, badly bruised and malnourished found in back in February of 1957 in the wooded area of Philadelphia. And as of today, a killer has never been caught despite despite all the twists and turning in this investigation, which has captured the nation's attention. It has been nearly seven decades after the battered body of a young boy was found, stuffed inside a cardboard box. And the U.S. police have revealed his identity. His name is Joseph Augustus Sarelli. He was the victim of the Philadelphia most notorious cold case. This child's naked, badly bruised body was found on 20, February 25 of 1957 in that wooded area of Philadelphia's Fox Chase neighborhood. Now, police have finally discovered his, his identity, and they hope it will bring them one step closer to finding the boy's killer and give the victim known to the generation of Philadelphians as the boy in the box a measure of dignity. When people think about the boy in the box, a profound sadness is felt, not just because a child was murdered, but because his entire identity and his rightful claim to his own existence was taken away. Philadelphia Police Commissioner Danielle Outlaw said at a news conference, she said the city's oldest unsolved homicide has haunted this community. The Philadelphia Police Department, our nation, and the world for almost 66 years. The homicide investigation remains open and authorities said they hope to publicizing it. You know, Joseph's name would spur a fresh round of leads. And police said both of Joseph's parents are dead, but that he has living siblings. When the boy was discovered, he was four years old and had been wrapped in a blanket and placed inside a large box. Police say he was malnourished and had been beaten to death. The boy's photo was put on a poster which was hung all over the city as police worked to identify him and catch his killer. Detectives pursued and discarded hundreds of leads that he was a Hungarian refugee, Another one was a boy who had been kidnapped outside a Long Island supermarket in 1955 and a variety of other missing children cases. The investigation, they pretty much investigated a pair of traveling carnival workers and a family who worked a nearby foster home, but ruled them out all as suspects. And an Ohio woman claimed her mother bought the boy from his birth parents in 1954, kept him in the basement of their suburban Philadelphia home, and killed him in a, in a fit of rage. Authorities found her to not find her credible and could not confirm her story. So that was another dead end. And generations of police took up the case. They got permission to exhume his body for DNA testing back in 1998 and again in 2019. And it was that the latest round of testing combined with genetic genealogy that gave police their big break. Dr. Colleen Fitzpatrick, president of the Identifinders at the International, a company that uses forensic genetic genealogy to help law enforcement investigate cold cases and said the victim's DNA was so degraded that it took two and a half years of work 
to be able to extract enough data to perform the genealogy. The test results were uploaded to the DNA databases, leading to a match on the child's maternal side. The authorities obtained a court order for vital records of any children born to the woman they suspect was Joseph's mother between 1944 and 1956 and found Joseph, Joseph's birth certificate, which also listed the name of his father. His headstone will finally have a name. Originally buried in a pauper's grave, the boy's remains now lie just inside the front gate at Ivy Hill Cemetery under a weeping cherry tree and a headstone des designated him as the America's, America's unknown child. Services have been held there each year on the anniversary of the boys discovered inside the box. So basically everybody gathers there at his cemetery um, plot on the year that he was discovered. People often leave flowers and around this time of the year, Christmas, they decorate it and bring toys to him. The boy has always been special to all of us because we don't know who he is. Dave Drysdale, the cemetery secretary treasurer said, now they do. And now he has a name, his real name. It will be etched on his stone which makes it a very special thing. Now he has an identity. Now, hopefully this will bring more leads to the authorities so they can investigate and hopefully bring a suspect out and give Joseph the justice he deserves and the peace he deserves and close this sad case so this little boy can rest in peace. Um, it is still sad, even though we have a name and everything like that. But and knowing his parents have passed, he does have siblings. We still do not have information on that. Um, we hope to bring more episodes when updates are provided on this case. Um, as it is currently an open investigation, so I know more information will come up. So just make sure to stay tuned and don't forget, subscribe so you can receive notifications when the next upload will be available. And I promise I will keep everybody updated on this case as I'm sure a lot of people will be following it. And let's talk about it. If you have any comments, suggestions, go ahead and message me on through your favorite podcast platform or you're welcome to message me on Instagram. You can find me as True Crime Junkies. And I will, um, I'll be coming up here soon again with another episode. So stay tuned. Bye.